welcome to today's vlog. So on today's vlog, I promised you guys hair color. So we're gonna do, bring the haircut that we did in the last vlog to life. Um, this was our inspiration for the last vlog. We're gonna do the color as well. So we did the shag type haircut. We used our Marcel iron to give it that curl and wave. I really love the result of this, but obviously this doesn't look as cool as this does. I wanna go in, I want to add the hair color to it. So now here's the thing. We're gonna have to pre-lighten the mannequin just like you would pre-lighten your guest. So we need to create white hair first then what we're gonna do is overlay it with the blue and then kind of feather it into the end. So if we get the right white on the ends, then all we have to do is overlay that blue and we should be uh, good to go. This technique should not be difficult. I'm gonna say that now, haven't done it yet, obviously. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in, Paul Mitchell also sent me their Skylight uh, Balayage Lightener. This is their hand painting clay lightener they just came out with. And I'm gonna use 40 volume developer with that to get that pop and lift in there. So we're gonna just do some hand painting really fast. And then after we get done hand painting, we'll let it process and then we'll tone it white. And if we can get it toned white, then we'll put the blue over top of it. But this is gonna be a journey for all of us. So let's get started guys, here we go. So to mix the skylight, what I'm gonna do is mix equal parts one to one. So we got our scooper, we got our bag O lightener. All right guys, so take a look at that. There is our uh, balayage lightener. It's very, very lightweight. So you'll definitely notice that there's a big difference between regular lighteners and balayage lighteners, clay-based lighteners. Okay, so the details on balayage lightener. You should always, and I've learned this the hard way, you should always read the instructions of the product before you start using it because every product is unique in its own way. Paul Mitchell Skylight is a hand painting lightener ideal for accuracy and precision in freehand application techniques with up to seven levels of lift, uh, which is great because we're only trying to go a couple levels uh, here. The formula mixes to a creamy consistency with a unique texture that helps eliminate the need for foil non-transfer plastic or paper mesh. So this is the thing with balayage lighteners, guys. Basically what it does, is it forms kind of an outer shell and just like a foil incubates the hair. So the key thing when you're hand painting hair is to make sure that you fully saturate it, almost oversaturate your section where you want the lightest part to happen. So in the instructions, it calls for a one to 1.5 ratio with the lightener. So this was actually a discussion that we had in the salon recently um, when you're talking about lightener, is one actually one ounce or is it one scoop? In this case right here, it is one well-rounded scoop to one and a half ounces of cream developed. So one well-rounded, whoops, geez. One well-rounded scoop. Like that, there we go. Now we're going to do one and a half ounces of cream developer 40 volume mixed into that. All right guys, let's get started with our application. Here we go. All right, so we're gonna start off keeping the sectioning very simple for this. We just wanna make sure that we do the four quadrants that you learn in beauty school, but then also take small sections as we work through the head because what we're trying to do is create an overall brighter canvas to work on so that we get the true tones that we're looking for when we put the Pop XG on. So we're gonna start off working scalp to ends, just brushing into the scalp, not to get it on the scalp, and then painting everything through, fully saturating the section. We're using the skylight balayage lightener because you can work over top of the hair you don't have to use foils but it helps incubate the hair using that clay base so we work our way through uh, section by section working about a half an inch at a time all the way up to the top of the head and then we do the same thing on the opposite side so i'm painting through really fast you also see that i work my brush flat against the hair and then when i get to the end i kind of paint back and forth that just helps move the hair and saturate the ends completely, but gives me more of a lived in look towards the base. If you think about the inspiration, the picture that I showed you at the beginning, it has a much deeper, darker blue kind of teal look to it. So we don't have to worry about getting it as bright at the base, we just wanna get a nice blonde so that we get the right tones that we're looking for. Then through the ends, the ends were uh, a bit more silver white look. So I wanna make sure that I saturate the ends with the lightener and then as I work up to the scalp, I stay off the scalp a little bit. There's no reason to put this directly on the scalp and I just paint it through the ends. 
So as I continue on to the next section, we're gonna do the same exact thing. So we're gonna start at the very bottom, taking those half inch sections. Now, a key thing to, to think about as you're working through this technique is the thicker the section, the harder it is gonna to be to get the saturation that you're looking for. So you won't get a consistent uh, lightning experience. So just make sure that you take nice half inch panels down and then you'll get your saturation that you're looking for and a consistent uh, feel to the lightning. So now I'm just gonna work on the fringe. This is very similar as well. So just hand painting the fringe, getting a little bit of brightness through there, let it process. You can see this is our end result. So it still has a little bit of those yellow undertones, but it's much brighter than it was. So we're gonna use the Pop XG, half an ounce of opalescent, and then an ounce and a half of the diluter. Now, if she's even more yellow than this, then I would go with a little more of the opalescent because it does have a really nice violety base. But you could see, Instantly, as I put this on the hair, this is what I was so impressed about, is that instantly when I got it on the hair, you could see how it's turning into that silver white uh, look. So I'm really, really excited about this product, using it like this as a toner. So we're just gonna overlay it over the whole entire head. There is a few processes involved in creating this fantasy color look, but the reason for that is you gotta get everything right as you go through it. If you try to do it all at the same time, if we try to put the teal in and then run it into this color, you could do that, but if you wanna do it right, I like to tone everything over, get it that silver white tone, and then when I overlay the blue, you get a nice, uh, a better, more true look to the color. So you can see how that created that really nice silver blonde look especially through the ends where we had it really light uh, and it's a little more uh, softer yellow throughout the, the base, but that we're gonna cover with our blue. So this is the Pop XG blue. I'm gonna put that in the bowl and then I'm gonna go through with the Pop XG teal just to brighten up the blue a little bit. I didn't want the blue so deep and I, it did have kind of that green tint to it um, as well. So I wanted to add that tone in there. So I keep adding and mixing. The great thing about Pop XG, there's no developer, so you just put it in the bowl, and then I work through it, and I find the tone that I'm looking for. So take a look at the, the depth in that blue. I really love it, but it also has that kind of teal feel to it um, in the undertone, so really, really cool. Now I'm just gonna go through, and I'm gonna start saturating the base to mid shaft. Now I'm gonna really saturate the base and then I'm gonna feather it into the mid shaft using my fingers to kind of pinch that color in and drag it down. So I put the heaviest amount at the base and then I pinch it with my fingers, pull the color down slightly into the mid shaft and then feather it off towards the ends. And that gives me that color melt feel. So any of you guys that have challenges with the blending of color, just make sure that you're not saturating it too much into the mid shaft. You really just wanna soak the base and then peel the color down with your fingers. And the cool thing about fantasy color as well is you really see it coming to life as you're doing it. So I start painting at the base. As I'm dragging it down, I can actually see what that's gonna look like. If you don't feather it down enough, you don't saturate it enough, you're gonna get a spotty look to the color and that's not what you want to happen. So. Again, it's really key to take small panels. Uh, you can go a little larger than when you did with the lightener, but just make sure you soak it through and then drag it into the ends. Um, again, you can see it, it's starting to come to life already. I love seeing the tones already pop through. Half inch sections all the way through the panel, heavy dose on the, on the scalp, and then drag it into the ends. Now I'm leaving out the bang area. That's actually all gonna be the teal blue color. So as I uh, finish up the base and finish up everything, I can just pull the bangs back into the look. So I, do, I try to stay away from those right uh, at the beginning. The other thing, if you remember the haircut that we did on this, this is the previous video. So if you guys wanna check that out, there's a link in the description to the haircut and the style. But um, this is more of a shag look. So there's some pretty short layers in the back. So what I do is just really focus the color into that base, but then I don't drag it as far. At this point, you'll see those shorter layers coming through. So I just feather it down. There's gonna be a little less white on the ends of those pieces. But then once I get down to the bottom here, the hair's a little bit longer and I'll leave a little more of that white on the ends. So this is a good look at it again, saturating it, then feathering it through. Then as I get to the middle of the head, the pieces are a little shorter, so I saturate them a little further uh, than the rest of the hair. Just to add that depth in the middle of the haircut. 
And then there's no reason to uh, have too much of the white ends in the very middle. And then at the end where the hair is going to be shooting out and styled, that's where you want that white to really pop on the bottom. This is where I talk about, you can see it come into life. You see the color, uh, the blue color coming through, the white on the ends that we've already done with the toner. So that's why I like doing it in a few different processes. We paint the fringe up, and then we're gonna let that process, I, not really process, because there's not much of a process to it. You're really just staining the hair. So what I did is let it sit on for 20 minutes, and there is the end result. I hope you guys like this color video. Definitely let me know if you have questions in the comments below. All right, guys, so we've come to the end of the video. This was a really fun video to make. Thank you to Paul Mitchell for sending me this Pop XG color to play around with. Had a lot of fun doing this uh, whole thing. So we created the cut and the style last video. So if you guys haven't had a chance to check that out, go into the description, click the link. You can watch the cut and the style, and then hopefully we put it all together. Here's the color. Remember our inspiration that we had for this video? It came from the Behind the Chair magazine. This is B scenes work so if you guys aren't following B seen on Instagram definitely go do that but you guys got to take inspiration from everywhere and this is the best way to do it so I like to look at these magazines and then go try to recreate it so this is my version of what he did I'm sure we didn't do it in the same way that's not the whole point the whole point is pushing yourself to try things you don't normally do and if any of you guys know me you know that I mostly cut hair so pushing myself to do the hair color and all of that was really fun hope you guys learned along with me uh, during this video and again thank you to everyone everyone who always watches these videos and make sure if you haven't subscribed hit that subscribe button below thank you guys for watching i'll see you on the next video thanks don't forget check out freesaloneducation.com we have over 600 videos also use that code mattbeckvlog at checkout get 20 percent off a lot of different products on our web store and make sure that you join our FSE partner program. That is a program where we do live classes for free for stylists. All you got to do is sign up. Go to fsepartner.com. You can sign up for that for free. You'll get the alerts about the live classes. And also, if you are not a stylist and you're looking for a new hair salon, go to our website, hairsalonlocator.com. That's where we put all of our FSE partner salons so that you guys can find a great stylist to create this look for you. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe and I'll see you guys on the next video. Thanks.